20 years after Independence Day broke box office records when it hit theaters back in 1996, the sequel is ready for the big screen. The 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. Go back. The summer box office almost upon us, a make or break time for Hollywood. And with the 2015 summer box office grossing almost $4.5 billion, that was up nearly 10% from the year earlier due to number one movie, Jurassic World. What is in store for this year, 2016? In the Fox Light host, Michael Tamara joins us right now with a breakdown of the summer's most anticipated movies. Big time for the industry, Michael. Big time, make or break for sure. You know, summer is to Hollywood as, as Christmas is to retail. 40% of the revenue is generated. A lot of money in a 40%. very 40 percent. A lot of money in a very short period of time. It makes or breaks studios and careers. If there's a theme to this summer, it's probably comics, sequels, and reboots. Every studio, starting of the first Friday in May with Disney's Avengers movie, has their own comics-themed uh, movie. Uh, Fox has the X-Men. And uh, Warner Brothers has their Suicide Squad, which is a follow-up to Batman versus uh, Superman, which is their big DC Universe movies. In terms of sequels, Independence Day Resurgence, 20 years after the original. It's going to be a big movie for Fox, Roland Emmerich. Um, and then also we have a sequel to Finding Nemo, Finding Dory. Oh, which my is God, be huge, I love that one. I, I know. It's going to be with uh, Ellen DeGeneres. It's going to be a huge family fun movie. And reboots, we can look forward to an all-female cast of Ghostbusters. So w what is it cheaper? to produce is it the remakes is it the like you know the, the the animation or you know in terms of the expense so I'm trying to figure out where the upside is in terms of profitability you know these are all this is this is one period of time where they throw all the money at some of their biggest okay. projects so it's really not you know the, the, these movies aren't inexpensive to make especially a movie like Independence Day 2 it's, it's going for the mass market getting as many people in as possible you know like Jurassic Park you know, it was made for about $150 million, not small change, but it brought in over about $2 billion. Wow. So that's kind of what they're looking for. And this movie's appeal across, you know, not only the domestic box, box office, but also the international box office. People like to go to the movies in the summertime. I mean, it's, a, it, it's an important time for people because they're basically on vacation and they will spend the money to do it. Everyone's home, kids are home, right. families are home, they're on vacation. Good point, families are home. Yeah, it's a great, and that's why you see a lot of family uh, friendly fare at the box office. The Jungle yeah. Book, Walt Disney. Disney's what we're looking at right now. That, they've got some high hopes there. A huge success. It opened up last weekend. It's probably going to be number one this weekend. You know, Disney has a new strategy in terms of remaking some of their animated classics and turning them into live action movies. They have another one coming out this summer, Peace Dragon. So. It's good. Uh, in terms of Independence Day, uh, are the, when do the expectations get too high? They're, they're, it's a slow burn. You know, they released one trailer and it kind of was received with people like, eh. But the trailer that comes out next week, it's going to blow people's minds. We were on set last year while they were filming it in New Mexico. It looks absolutely incredible. I actually shot a scene, Maria. So, oh, really? I did. Yeah, we'll have that for you. Next <laughs> so, week. so do your expectations go up going into the summer? I mean, after the year that we've seen when people started going back to the movie theaters, I mean, how are your expectations going into the summertime this this year? For the studios are very high. Yeah. I mean, they, they, this is for them. They put all their big guns out. Um, this three-month window, and you know, because after that, everyone's back to school, back to work, and it's it's hard to make that number for the year. And then they look toward Christmas. Christmas That's the next big money maker. Oscars, yeah. Right. Of course. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll be watching that. Meanwhile, Michael, today we're remembering the life of a music legend. Obviously, thousands of people gathering outside. Prince's home yeah. in downtown Minneapolis. Your thoughts today on Prince? Shocking news. You know, his imprint will be felt throughout pop culture, certainly music, where he's released over thousands of songs during his 30 year career. Seven Grammys. Seven Grammys, 30 nominations, an Academy Award. But his imprint will also be felt in fashion, movies, and also sports. You know, he recorded a scene for the Minnesota Vikings, Purple and Gold, their fight song. Wow. And yeah. I think I also recall seeing an interview where you actually bowed to him, Maria I did, Robo. I did, I did. I called him. <laughs> Music royalty, and because he really you was. You paid homage. Oh my God, of course. And, and by the way, um, when you look at Prince, it's more than just his music. He was an icon. Creative icon. Yeah. I heard that yesterday, and to me, that just hit it all. Because as, we, as I said, you know, music, fashion, movies, 
Everything. That, I grew up with him. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? We all grew up with him, right? It's our, That was our generation. That was our generation's 80s and 90s. Michael, good to Little see you. Little red Corvette, baby. Have a great, have a great weekend. <laughs> Thanks, you Michael too. Michael Tamara. The